I've been preparing myself for this and I think it's worked out lovely. We're going to just take a little look. We talked about how it's London and we know that, but we're just going to say, is there anything in the street? Anything. Look at that. It's a lonely, lonely life. Nothing. No one to lean on, not a friend, no one to call your own. The streets of London are bare, no friend to be found. The streets of London are naked when friendship's on your mind. You will never find a friend, my friend, but you could be my friend to the end. It's like picking out a thermos at a zoo Waiting for somebody just like you It's lonely at the top Don't let the magic stop We're picking out a thermos At the zoo I love you I'd like to welcome you to the Dr. Ron Phillips Show Where we discuss everything We don't hide anything We just come on out into the open And we say what's on our minds. And we try to let go of the bad air and bring in the good air. Because I, Dr. Ron Phillips, am here to help. I'm here for your trust. I'm here for your love. I'm here for the truth. And I'm going to get it. So let's let it all out now. Breathe in. Breathe out. And let's relax. Welcome to the Dr. Ron Phillips Show. Do you feel it? What is what the word? Who slang. is slang? Lying is it like slang. a boomerang? It is like a boomerang that never comes back. Oh. Slang is like a boomerang that never. Comes. Puppet Underground is rad. 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 Maybe slang is about shortening things. That's cool. Speeding up language. The word "cool" is probably the best That's the slang. We should call ourselves. Cool. Slang my butt girl. Thanks a lot. City, they don't wanna know your number. People in the city, they just wanna feel the thunder. Power is real. That's all they think, that's all they want. But when they wake in the morning, that's all that they stop. They want power. You know what they want? People want power. I was one, I was the other day I was hanging out. With this guy who had to fire a guy, they had to let him go from the company. It was a dark day, you know what I mean? Like the guy's been there for eight years, more like 800, you know? More like 30. And it, and it seems like, you know, we had to let him go. So the fellow who was kind of put in charge of the, uh, the guillotine, as, as it were, said, you know, we're moving forth into a new era. And I said, we're moving forth? Give the guy some severance, you know what I mean? Like it was c- cold. It's a cold world down to the basics, they're the bottom line. People say, what's the bottom line on this? Well, the bottom line is money, as they say, right? I mean, what's the bottom line? Spirit is the bottom line, but the bottom line is money, right? Because all the spiritualists out there starving to death, right? Well, all the capitalists is just, you know, buying cupcakes and pondering what the spiritualists already know. But the fact is, if the spiritualists would know it, what are they doing with it besides suffering? Thank you, Taylor. I'm here witnessing a 43-year-old man named Scott McLeese attempting to commit suicide. If he is not saved today, he will leave behind three children and a devoted wife. I can't take it anymore. I want to kill myself. I'm going to jump. I'm going to kill. The I can't child take it anymore. Of 13, who is stunningly oh beautiful and I'm smart, jump. is named Zena, who at the moment is weeping for her father to come down. This is too much. The the middle child, whose name is Hannah, I'll kill myself. is at the moment trying to climb onto the roof herself. I'm gonna do it. And bring her dad down. Should I? And has to be held back by her mother, who is desperately trying to calm her down. 
The youngest child, whose name is Johnny, is currently oblivious to the whole horrible incident. I definitely want to. Hallelujah! The fire department has just pulled up and will make a tremendous you effort to help. You can't save me. You can't help me. I want to kill Hopefully myself. Hopefully this will end on a happier note. What do you ha have to say for yourself, Isaac? I just have to say I can't wait to do it again. Anything to make my mommy proud. So then the old guy was dead, Tinseltown, De uh, Tinseltown Donnie was the guy who was getting the axe. And so we, we gathered around the table and we took a moment to say, listen Tinseltown, things aren't looking good for you. And we all kind of had to make a contribution, you know. The boss said, listen everybody, put a knife in Tinseltown, the bastard. You know what I mean? He wanted him out. So fair enough, I mean, what are you going to do, eh? You're just a pawn in, the, in the, the larger scheme of things, right? Of course. You know, you're a little perfect world, you're, you're a king, but really in the grand scheme, you're a little pawn, right? So he said, listen, Tinseltown Timmy, I said to him, you did something wrong and I'm telling you. Right now I'm telling you about it. And that's what I had to say, it was terrible. And, and then we had to take the sacrificial bag of keys away from him, right? Because he could sabotage you to the whole world if he wanted to. So he said, you know, get your keys. Get out of the truck. And he walked in, he walked back into the little blue Christmas bag full of keys and it was like, Johnny, we hardly knew ye. Johnny, where did you go? Johnny, we hardly know ye. Johnny, where did you go? Johnny, we hardly knew ye. I'll hold this microphone even though it's not being used. How would that look? This looks like Russian microphone too. You know, I will be doing the broadcast in Soviet Union languages. Look at this tape job. It's just an abomination, isn't it? You know, good equipment. Why does NBC get all the good equipment and a guy like me has to sweat it out? I'm holding this microphone even though it's not being used in my mix, which makes me look like Soviet broadcaster. Listen, I am Soviet broadcaster talking to you about the truth of it. My name is Ronsky, Lafot Lovett Ronsky. That would be a good name for it. I like the three characters, but laugh out loud with Ronsky might be worth it. Maybe if we should separate the ski and laugh out loud with Ronsky. Do you have quilted toilet paper? We have the best toilet paper in the world. I was talking about that in the show. Yeah, we have. We have, no. without a doubt, without a doubt, I, I think it's one of the things that we can say clearly about Canada and be proud to say. Canada has the best toilet paper in the world. The only guys who have better are the guys who live in the palaces in Dubai, you know? They actually use golden toilet paper to wipe their bums, so that's the truth. Yeah, but it hurts. If you go to Greece or something, you wouldn't even have a roll. Here's what you would have. Once I went, I had $10 American, and I had to go to the bathroom so badly, there was a little lady dressed in a black kimono who was looked about 170 years old, and I said, Good God, what a drinky! I spoke in German and Greek, and she said, Here you go, 10 bucks. And this is what she gave me, you know. It was, it was a total nightmare. <laughs> And you know how hard it is to wipe a grown man's patootie for something as small as that? It was unbelievable. But yeah, Canada, we rule. And you know, you could actually use this. You could sew this. This stuff is, you know, you'd be tempted to eat it with a spoon, but eat it with a fork. You know, you want to get every last drop. Oh, uh, what's the... T oh, it's a real tape. I was just having a, a bit, a bit of peanut butter. I was doing something. Ah, I'm not dead. Ah, I'm not dead. Ah, I'm just resting. resting. Oh, I'm just resting. Wait, I'm not dead. Just then, that was the truth about it. You see, you can make a movie. This is the emotions that we go through, you know? It's a gamut of emotions, and some days you get the big ones, right? You know, the real fear, yeah, or the real anger, the real hatred. Remember when I was a kid, I was watching my, my sister run a race. Uh, with my friend's little sister. And I never really liked my sister at that time, I think. I was quite cruel, I was quite vicious, you know what I mean? And, um, and I saw the two girls racing down the street there, down the playground in the little chalk lines all laid out by the grade A boys, you know what I mean? 
and they were running and, and I was cheering for my sister, you know, in a way that I couldn't describe. And it might, at that stage of my life, I wasn't, I wasn't aware enough to realise it was my blood. You know, it was my DNA out there running on that field. Inside I knew, right, inside my body, inside my realm, my inner realm, in my soul, I knew I'd cheer for my sister. And my buddy, who didn't like his sister either, was cheering for his sister, like, come on, Wanda! You know, I was like, oh, that's the third, you know. Oh my God, it was fantastic. It was like a meeting of the minds. It was like a spirits clashing, eh? Spirits clashing. That's what life is, eh? Spirits clashing. We try and have fun with our thoughts, and this is what we come up with in our spare time. Thoughts. Thoughts that are our own. This is my own thought. There's a guy over there in that house, he's not having these thoughts. There goes a guy in the car, he's not thinking about what I'm thinking about. These are my own thoughts, your own personal thoughts, private thoughts. Interesting. Privacy. Is there any such thing as privacy? These are the big questions. Right. I mean, do we have privacy or are we open? Are we wide open for all the world to see at all times? I think that would scare the people who love privacy. The fact is that they're, they're wide open at all times. You know? Just one glance in their eye and they're wide open at all times. Of course, this is truth, but you can never explain that to someone who likes their privacy, right? They say, want their privacy. Close the door. You know, don't talk about it. Can you imagine that? Close the door and don't talk about it. Go to your room. These are explosive things that happen to us as a child. Go to your room. You know what I mean? Did you ever do something so bad that you got in real trouble? It was, wasn't so bad, but you didn't think it was, but you found out later. But, well, I've, I've once got a whipping by the, the belt of my father for ruining a paddling pool by throwing rocks in to bomb my G.I. Joes. I had broken holes in the bottom of the pool and they came home and I was, there was a serious problem and the, and I got down into the basement and I was ready for the lash. I'd never had the lash before, never, never since, and never before. It was the one time lash experience of my lifetime. And he took his belt off and then he dropped it like a feather on us. He didn't have the heart at all. It was so cute. It was like, there's me and my brother. If I, I don't know how he got sucked into it, maybe just because he was an asshole, which is the truth. But we were laying there with our bums. I don't know if bare bums. I, I think it was, maybe, I don't know. Imagine that, you two, you got your two boys down with bare bums. And you're gonna rip them. What? So he gave me the light and little feather, and I almost turned around and said, Are you kidding me? Give it to me, man! You know? But anyway, I'm glad he didn't, I guess. And maybe I'd be a better man if he did give it to me, and I just blasted off my ass like that. Like, I probably would have been a better man today if my dad wouldn't have been weak. My father was a weak man, and that's the problem. You know what I mean? My mother was absent, she was busy, she was cleaning. My God. She'd do your teeth for you in the morning if you did, if you lie still long enough. She'd brush it out, scrub it out. You know what I mean? Oh my God. How fabulous is light? I'll tell you. It's more fabulous than anything you'll find. How, fabu how fabulous is light? I'll tell you, buddy. You can make a light in the night. All right. How fabulous is love? I'll tell you. Oh, how fabulous is freedom in your hand. Ah, oh, how fabulous is light, my brother. Ah, oh, someday, brother, well, yeah, I know you'll understand. Ah, oh, how fabulous is peace, I'll tell you. How fabulous is love, I don't know, two, three. Ah, oh, how fabulous is hope, when there's no hope at all. Someday we will find out, and that's all. Ha, oh, someday we will find out, and that's all. Ah, how fabulous is the music, I'll tell you, boom, boom, boom. How fabulous is music when you hear it on the street. Ah, how fabulous is light, I'll tell you, yeah. Yes, you're my buddy, you're someone I want to meet. Yes, oh, how fabulous is love, I'll tell you, all right. How fabulous is peace in your hand, all right. How fabulous is love when you just don't understand. That's how fabulous. Love really is. Lots of things to do and see today. I think grooming is underrated. Groom yourself, for God's sake. Look at you. Clean yourself up. Anyway, we're talking about uh, pain versus pleasure and wealth. Now, the rich. I wonder what it would be like to be rich, Snow Leopard. I mean, so you could say, oh, I want to do this. And you go and do it. Wow. Like, I want to go on a hot air balloon today. Mm -hmm. I call the guy and we do it. Or... I want to go to Paris tonight for the show. Couldn't that be nice? I can't do that, you know. And uh, if I was rich like that, what a life. I mean, what a different life. 
scary, really. I think it's almost better not to it's think about not it because you yeah, can't yeah. do anything about so it. And don't if talk you, about that one. And if you did, if you if you were rich, then you'd have to do something about that's it. That's right. And, and then can't. you can't. So, so it. no, don't. It's a pain to imagine. It's a pain in the, uh, to imagine. What about when we talk about uh, life versus death? Oh, life versus death. You know, I was. Uh, wow. I, I think life is probably better than this. I wonder though. I mean, we really don't know. We don't have much information on the flip side, really. We only have like, you know, we know life. It's kind of like comparing apples to death. To, yeah, to death. Yeah, death is not as fun to compare to. No, it's like, like apples that. and. No, no apples no. and. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody freeze or something like that. Because life and death. Life is like a, a box of what, chocolates. A box I think. of road trips. But what that? is death like? Is death like a a box of dogs versus cats? Oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> hey, wait a second. <laughs> sorry, I love you. I'm so We're not sorry. supposed to be my getting be, to my the. My beak was oh. sharp. There. I love you. So. Oh, oh, Jesus. God bless you. So we all get 15 minutes of close-ups if we would just look. Hello. I'm just hiding out over here. I don't want anyone to see me. I don't think there's anyone around. Hello? This place gives me the freaks. Hello? Did you hear that? Someone's here. Hello? No, there's nobody in here. Don't come in the front room by the plant. No. Sometimes, sometimes I just want to stay. Just sit here and think and wait. See what happens. Go away. You know what I mean? You can get really lonely sometimes though doing this. Just sitting by the flower, by the plant. Doesn't really do much for you in the long run, really, does it? I mean, really, I, I'm not having a lot of fun right here. I'm just hiding out. But sometimes I really like to hide out. Do you ever hide out? When do you hide out? Do you hide out when you're feeling blue? Do you hide out when you're eating? What about those people that just start eating, eh? They just start eating and they never stop. They get like a, a super duper slushy Cooper. It's the size of their torso. They get that, some pop, then they get some chips and a foot long hot dog. Then they go back and do it all again at lunch. You know what I mean, those guys, the Twinkies? They, all the candies, I'm a bit of a candy man myself, but really, what about the guys that won't eat? They won't eat. And then when they do, they puke it up. Hey, sometimes I think it's, I've, I've made a good decision just staying here, right by this tree, just taking it easy. What about those guys who, who just can't stop doing like something like gambling? What about those guys? They've got to go to someplace and lay a bed straight away. They've got to, it's amazing. I mean, can you imagine? It's bad enough to trying to keep up with all your, you know, the normal addictions that so-called normal people have. It's bad enough. But to have to deal with something like, I've got to go, you know, and bet, bet on a pony or a game. I gotta make a phone call. <laughs> you know what I mean? People say, you know, I'm addicted to this or that, you know, sex, I don't know. People say they're addicted to eating. People say they're addicted to walking in the park. They're addicted to exercising. But is all these addictions, aren't they all the same? Aren't they all the same? Yeah, every addiction. Yeah, every addiction is the same as the last one. That's what the doctor told me. He said every addiction is the same, Ron. What you gotta do is you gotta realize the addiction and don't let it control you. You gotta try and control it. But it's not easy, you know what I mean? It's not easy at all. Addictions, that's why I'm hiding out behind this plant. Because if somebody if somebody comes in here who won't eat, who only can eat, or who needs to make a phone call, I'll be hiding, they won't even know. Is there somebody there? You see, that's the beauty of this. There's nobody here. I know for a fact there's nobody in here. Hello? Don't you love that when you know something? Maybe the spirits are in here from the past. Well, I think that too. But, really, I think it's fair to say there's nobody here. Hello? Is that you, Charlie? Vi? What do you mean, go pick her up at the station? I guess this, sometimes there is something in there. Forget about me, I'm not here. Have a good day. I'm in love with life. On my dying day, 
I wish that all the world could be could be left free of, of disease and, and poverty and I wish that every child would have a place to call their own, have a chance to, to find love and to, to really get inside what life is because on my deathbed, which is what I'm on right now, I feel, I feel really sick. Uh, uh, Now what do we do in inclement weather? You know, the really cold stuff. Oh my goodness, the kind that chills you to the bone, makes you feel like there's just nothing worth doing anymore. I'll tell you what we do. We reach inside. We give ourselves a second chance. We reach out and touch the face of God. And we find our way home. I'm Dr. Ron Phillips, and I'm freezing my knackers off. At the beginning of every day, there's a brand new opportunity to be thankful. Thankful for all the little things. A cup of coffee, a pat in the back, a smile from a friend. We all have these special moments where we realize we're thankful. Help, I'm white and I can't get down. Are you with me, people? Help, I'm white, don't turn myself around. Bill, I look to the left, <laughs> look to the right, and baby, help, I'm white and I can't get down. Help, I'm blue, baby. We're floating in a cube. We're floating in a cube through time and space. Music can do people. A little bit of music will take you a long way. That's the one to it. We know about that.